I wanted to ask you about this. Can we talk about your father? Yeah, we can talk about my dad. How long ago did he pass? It's great you asked me that, man, because I had a moment, right? I was jogging yesterday. Uh, he, he passed in 2018. Okay. So um, I had a moment yesterday. I was jogging, running down the street, you know? And uh, I started to walk. I started to run backwards because I was just feeling good. Right. And as soon as I turned backwards, I took like maybe, I, I jogged for maybe like 20 feet backwards. And I had to turn back around because I had a moment, man, where I almost broke down. Because when, when I used to race my dad when, when I was younger, mm. he was obviously faster than me. And I was obviously, you know, five, six years old. But he would always turn backwards and look at me and say, you, ain't, you can't catch me, you can't catch me. And, um, and so that shit, I stopped and, uh, you know, a few tears, I dropped a few tears, man, and I, I just, that was the first day I found out that I don't know if I really want to run backwards no more, you know, because like we talked about, you know, a few minutes ago, it's just hard when you lose somebody that means a lot to you. And my dad wasn't no fucking, he wasn't no angel, man. He did some fucked up shit uh, to me, my mom, my family and shit, but he was still my father and just as much fucked up shit as he did, he did good shit in my life. And he taught me a lot of things. And so I battled with that, you know, as a child, um, you know, from my childhood all the way, still some days in the adulthood. Cause some shit, even at 40 years old, I don't got the answers to, but this nigga, he always knew how to figure some shit out. And, mm. and for all the shootouts and kill it and jail time that he did, and, you know, and growing up in Compton like he did, he was from Nutty Block Compton Crip. You know what I'm saying? So um, he he was in Fo He went to Folsom. You know, he was in hella prisons, uh, San Quentin. And I'm talking about, you know, Supermax prisons when I was, you know, younger and shit. I can remember my mom taking us to go see him. And he always wanted her. You know, some 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 niggas go to jail. They don't want to bring their kids. They won't see it like that. But my dad was like, you know, bring my son to see me because he always had gems for me. And I'd be hearing his voice all the time, man. And and even though he wasn't perfect, like he was he was my father. And sometimes like now that my like my grandmother told me before she passed away, um, she told me, like, now you're the father. Mm. Now you have to be him and take over and do it better than he did. And sometimes, man, I be I be getting to these breaking points where I be feeling like I just need to ask him a question. But once you lose your parents, because you got to know everybody on earth has two parents, a mother and a father. When you lose a parent, it literally feels like a piece of you is gone from the inside. Like, fuck just your feelings. I'm talking about physically. You just feel like you're missing something. And when somebody dies like that, you... I don't care where you go on earth. You can go left, right, up, down. You can go anywhere. You're not going to be able to find that person ever again. And this is why I tell my kids all the time, love on each other, love who loves you. Because when it's over, like when it's time for somebody to punch the clock and leave earth, man, you ain't going to never be able to find them again. And a lot of people say, well, you got them in your heart and you got them in your mind. But who the fuck be wanting to hear that when they lose their loved one? I don't, I don't, yeah, I got my dad in my heart, but like I, he ain't, I want him in my face. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so, yeah, man, to anybody watching, like, you got to really love on your people. All the little small arguments you may have with, like, your siblings or a friend that you really love or your parents, you got to be the bigger person. If you see this shit, you should be the bigger person because if they die, you're going to be sick. And, right. and you're not going to be able to retire, like, to, you know, turn back the hands of time. I mean, it's like a tough pill to swallow at a certain point is that your parents aren't perfect, but that they had you. You, and you they, got kids? Yeah, my kid's, like, almost two. Oh, yeah, so you say almost two, like, it, that's like he two years from driving or some shit. <laughs> well, it's but kind yeah. of freaking to me, man. It's fucking, I'm still getting used to it. Yeah, nah, so so you know, man, it's like you're now you're a parent, and, and literally people be out here fucking and, and having kids but don't really understand the responsibility. Like, mm -hmm. you are, once you decide to have a child, a woman, or support a woman who's having a child and it's your child as a man, you are responsible for another human. Right. Now, I'm responsible for three. You got your babies two. And, like, you really low-key can't be doing Adam-22 shit <laughs> that you used to do before you had a baby because right. what is that What is that going to do for your daughter well, in the all, future? All the risk of, like, you know, just hanging out, being out in public <clears throat> or just for extended periods of time. Not to mention getting fucked up when I just think about all that shit I was putting up my nose and how every time I did that shit, I was just basically, you know, taking my life into my own hands. Yeah. And just that risk of, like, you know, the fact that I wouldn't necessarily even be able to be in this position to be her dad. I mean, so many of those things are just, like, things I could never imagine doing again. 
Yeah, um, we both fight in that same battle. And because I, I know sometimes, you know, everybody has a, a, a breaking point. Yeah, you know, even the even a you know scrawny nerd dude who you never think would react some way. Like everybody has a breaking point. And sometimes, you know, we push to those limits where we got to react. But as a father, um, I think that having children, if you really love your children the way you're supposed to, is they're a good brake pad for bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Facts. I got a friend who is a, a tough guy, I would say. You know, he's basically like, I never seen anybody be able to tell him shit. You know, he's always ready to scrap, Thank whatever. You. Thank you, man. You're, you're this type of guy, pretty much, yeah. And uh, he he told me a story about how he was at the beach and, you know, bumped into some dude who was like a real fucking gangbanger. Right. And he's with his kid, and the fucking guy actually pulled out his gun, like, let him see it, and just said some shit to him, completely disrespected him in front of his kid, and he told me how he just walked away. And I was very, very proud of him because I was like, I can't believe that your kid is the one thing that got you into the mindset of walking away from that situation that I know would have easily got you killed or thrown in jail if you, if your kid wasn't there with you. Yeah, I had a, and I, I've had a, and that's crazy. Your your friend was a better man than me on a day like that, um, because <laughs> yeah. I had I had I had situations where I had my kid before and chose to proceed with the bullshit. Mm. And um, my son, he I, he probably won't remember now, but he talked about that shit for like two years after that. Really? Because um, yeah. he saw you lose your, lose your cool one like, time. Like Dad, remember when we were this? And <laughs> You had that fight, and yeah. you were hitting them. When I was like, I had to every time I had to break them, you know, break them down, and just let them know that that wasn't cool, and that I would never do it again. And and it's only happened. It happened with my kids twice, um, and, and years, years, years ago, um, right. in my thirties and twenties. But uh, yeah, man, that shit to have a restraint to to let your children be motivating enough to sort of you know battle this this shit in your head that makes you want to jump off the deep end is just dope as fuck if you can channel into that like like homie like your homie did but it must be weird to even have to explain to your kid that you made a mistake you know and also knowing deep down inside that you would probably do it again yeah and literally <laughs> but yeah. again all of that is proud of prop uh you know part of the tutorial process as far as uh parenting goes you mm. know what i'm saying so it's all good everything is a lesson um when it's you know you and your child is concerned how do you how do you think your dad felt about seeing your success he was uh he was he, he was excited as fuck man he was i can't even remember at his funeral somebody getting up there and literally saying like and everybody know that you know game was his favorite and you know and then my mom was looking like why would she say that with my other 18 siblings right here you know what i'm saying but <laughs> yeah but it's got to be you know kind of transparent at a certain point when one yeah. kid becomes an international rap star yeah yeah now my dad he he was very supportive of my career and very happy i think that that was probably the thing that made him the most happy in his life is that I was able to amass uh, this, you know, this success, man. Well, you were able to tell the story of the life that he lived, more or less, and that a lot of other kids that he grew up alongside lived. And you were able to, like, put that into words to the point where, you know, even people who hadn't been through that at all were able to understand yeah, and I had conversations with my with my dad about uh, me speaking on uh, the truth uh, the truths of my childhood and upbringing and mm. foster care and his mishaps and you know my mom and all of that. I put that in my music and we had conversations about that and he uh, understood and he forgave me. Um, and his his forgiveness was important too, but also it was my story, so I wasn't gonna not tell it. You know what I'm saying? So we, uh, you know, we went a few months where we didn't speak because of it. Then we sat down and we had a conversation about it, but. What I can say is that when my dad passed away, our relationship was a one, and we were good. Um, and he was trying to, you know, alter his lifestyle for, you know, for a change and actually do a bunch of good stuff. And uh, it was just short lived because of his untimely demise. But that's why I was telling everybody: if you really love somebody and you can feel it in your heart, then you should just tell them and you should just mend whatever's broken because once they're gone, you'll never get the opportunity again. All right, people, we just hit 300,000 subscribers. You know we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. We appreciate y'all.